<laughs> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning. Calling together the calling to order and together the Wednesday, April 12th, 2023, meeting of the Kick Harbor Arts Commission at 10, uh, let's call it 10 o'clock. Um, our first order of business is the call to order, which we've done. The roll call, I'll start out. Charlie Block Jackson here. Sonia Johnson, Commissioner. Emily Co. Smith, Commissioner. Robin Offney, Commissioner. And online we have Leah Basile Lazarus, Commissioner. Kathy Dickens, Commissioner. And Colette Smith, Commissioner. And speaking on her behalf. It might be hard to unmute on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are going to welcome, or we do have a quorum, and we will welcome our new commissioners. So um, go right ahead. Oh, right. What you want us to do? No, okay. Um, uh, my name is Emily Kosmi. Um, my husband and I have our own architecture practice in Gig Harbor. We started it in 2019, but we didn't actually start getting going until this year. Um, the pandemic thing, right? <laughs> really, and then plus we have, you know, we have a, a daughter who's five years old, and so we were just I'm taking time off to kind of watch her, and now she's going to start kindergarten next year. So full time, you know, school, and so a lot more free time for me. So. Um, yeah, we do primarily uh, residential. We do custom designs. Mm -hmm. And prior to this, but I grew up here. Um, but I spent most of my after graduation, I went and worked on the East Coast. So most of my architecture background was on the East Coast. And then we moved where on the East Coast? Uh, New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No wonder you <laughs> smiled when I said that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were in New York for six years, um, mostly on East and Long Island, though. In the Hamptons area, but yeah. you know, we visited the city. Every Is your husband from the, the East no, Coast? No, he's from uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. so we oh, went... that's right. Because I went to Michigan. <laughs> oh, you so, did? Yeah, I'm go blue. So yeah, yeah. go blue. Yeah, yeah. So we met in um, grad school for architecture. So yeah, and now we're here to see. This is where you came back. Well, I came back home together, and he came with me. <laughs> so, great. Well, thank you. Welcome and welcome aboard to our. Thank you. Very excited. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great to have you. Yeah, yeah, it'll be. Um, it's a, it's a lively group. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, maybe we can. You know, you can help us with. There's an initiative. We haven't uh, that that is statewide, but not in the city yet. One percent for for uh, art initiative for mm -hmm. uh, new rebuilds for uh, commercial. Oh, okay. Okay. We can talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, lots of good possibilities. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, let's go next, uh, Leah. Okay. So you want to know a little bit about me. Um, I moved to Gig Harbor two and a half years ago. Uh, it was during the pandemic. I was close to retiring. I've been an art teacher forever. Uh, my last five years was in um, a Montessori high school, which was amazing. But during the pandemic, Mike and I were like, it's time to retire and it's time to move to Seattle where my son and my grandkids live. So um, we're originally from the East Coast, raw New Jersey, raw New York, and uh, we moved to Evanston 47 years ago, and we brought our kids up there. And then two and a half years ago, we moved to Seattle to be by David, and we planted ourselves in Gig Harbor uh, for a few reasons, but one, um, because I knew that it was a vibrant art community. And I kind of plunged myself into the art community here in Gig Harbor and, um, you know, the, with Pat, <laughs> with the tour, with Gallery Row, and um, I've met a lot of wonderful people. And uh, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of close the circle and be part of the commission. So that's why I applied. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, uh, Cassie. Good morning, guys. Uh, from sunny Arizona, I believe mm -hmm. I'm not the only one here. Which is cool. <laughs> no, we've got two people in Arizona. Yeah. It's a satellite. <laughs> it is a beautiful morning. Uh, however, we are packing up to hop on the plane, so thank you for letting me zoom in. Um, I moved to Gig Harbor just uh, 15, 16 years ago, and it's 
been plugged into the community ever since. Uh, started out as a personal trainer, which was my education by trade. Um, and that really just is one of my businesses. I was born and raised an entrepreneur, have a small business owner family. My husband's also a business owner here in the community. He runs um, a local investment bank. And during the pandemic, since we've been hitting on that, um, I decided that not only my craft sell great on my porch, but what would it be like if we partnered together with other handmaids? So that was sort of the beginning of Local Makers. We all, um, I found some people online that were making some awesome crafts. And now two years later, we have had the past two years, 10 um, local markets in the community, uh, had met contracts me to run their 80 vendors and such at Scarecrow Festival. And um, we just have opportunities coming up all the time. So uh, it seemed like the Arts Commission Board was a great place to be even more in the know as we want to reach out and just create even more creative spaces for the community, um, for everybody to express their art and have it accessible to all ages. And, um, so I'm excited to see where things go. Great, thank you. Welcome. Welcome, yes. And um, we probably should introduce ourselves as the um, older commissioners so that the new ones can kind of get to know us. Robin, you want to go ahead? Oh, sure. I'm Robin Avni and um, moved to Gig Harbor about five years ago, originally from the East Coast, as we were talking about, but I moved out to Seattle area 30 years ago um, and had um, about my background is um, in the design industry, first in uh, publishing for many years, creative director for the Seattle Times magazine to move out here. And then I moved over to this, I always say this little company called Microsoft, which it kind of was, you know, when I joined, but now it's not, um, and was there for many years managing uh, design and user experience teams. Um, then I kind of went back, got my master's degree in uh, digital communication at University of Washington and then began teaching at University of Washington and did design professor at Cornish. Then after all that, there's other things in between. I decided to um, just kind of uh, kick back when my husband retired, but then during the pandemic decided to start a publishing company. Don't ask me why, that was crazy, but my friend and I have, have joined forces and we have a small publishing company um, that we publish uh, boutique books with. So that's about it. I'm also on the Washington State Arts Commission. So I wear a few different hats. Um, and you'll hear me say that when I ever make a Washington State Arts Commission kind of statement. So um, that's it. Nice to be here. Thrilled to have three new members to join us and add some new energy to our commission. Thank you. Robin is the heavy hitter. Apparently, <laughs> but I think that's true. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Sonia, you want to go next? Uh, Sonia Johnson. Uh, I'm from <laughs> Illinois, from the Chicago area. Uh, my husband went to Northwestern, so Leah, there's that Evanston Northwestern connection. Lived right and, down the street. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I'm a lawyer practicing in uh, Illinois, not in Washington. Uh, I am active in the performing arts in uh, music, I sing I'm in an orchestra. Uh, my husband is active in uh, a lot of community bands and orchestras. Yes. Um, I also uh, have an interest in really any kind of art form, you know, poetry, literature, movies. I, I love old movies and film festivals. And uh, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed being on the Arts Commission, and I'm glad that you guys are joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Colette, are you there at a place where you can talk? Or If, if not, I will um, say that. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there we you got Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I collect Smith. Um, um, we moved to Gig Harbor about 20 years ago in the Air Force, um, and I was a, a practicing attorney, uh, mostly commercial litigation. I went to law school in um, uh, Seattle, uh, graduated from Seattle U, and uh, we enjoyed our time here so much we decided to come back here. So at the present moment, I am uh, I'm 
in the federal district court. And uh, in my spare time, I'm president of the Peninsula Art League, and we're kind of shepherding it through a big growth period now. Uh, put in place a strategic plan, and uh, anyway, it's very exciting. Uh, it's very exciting to see the new things coming, the bringing back the Art Walk and the uh, Gig Harbor the Open Studio, to all these things are um, wonderful and teeing us up, I think, really well for um, making Gig Harbor a creative district. And I'm happy to be part of that. And I'm happy that all of you are too. Great. Thank you, Colette. And so I guess I'm the last one. Um, Charlie Bob Jackson, I chair the commission and have for quite some time. And I've been a, an arts commissioner for probably longer than anyone else wants to admit. Um, but we've done a lot of wonderful things, I think. We've um, added a, an arts and culture element to the city's comprehensive plan, which is a very important thing, which we'll be reviewing later today. Um, we have, in the last four years, I guess, five years, um, brought back our Creative Endeavor grants, which are so helpful to so many organizations in our community that are um, bringing wonderful creative experiences to the community. Um, in a past life, I was in marketing and advertising, was vice president of a big agency in Seattle and then creative director at a smaller agency in Tacoma and several other agencies in various um, <laughs> stages. <laughs> yeah, various long ago in lifetimes far, far away. Um, now I'm a freelance journalist and um, um, welcoming a chance to be the eyes, ears, and voice for what's going on in our community. And founded the Olala Bluegrass and Beyond Festival and managed it for 25 years and also co-founded the Wintergrass Music Festival, which is an international music festival that happens now in Bellevue uh, every February and brings thousands of people. Yeah, that's a great festival. To, and, and thanks to, um, not Arts Law, but um, the other big arts organization. Arts Fund. Arts Fund, yeah. Um, so anyhow, I'm, I'm really involved. In my, my husband is a medical sculptor. And I will put in a plug. He did the as you walk into this building and see the stainless steel um, mural that's above the council chambers. That's my husband's work. Um, he also was commissioned most recently to do the artwork for the Ansich Waterfront Park, which Robin, I think you were involved in that selection. Yeah. And um, um, well, I wasn't involved in the selection, but when it came to be, we were involved in yeah. execution. So, right. Yeah. Right. And um, yeah, like that. Have lived here for 40, 50 years, something like that. A very long time. My parents have owned land in this area since the early 1950s. So, um, so yeah, and uh, just passionate about the arts in all their forms. So that's us. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's make some make some music. Absolutely. <laughs> make some joyful noise. Um, so now we have the task of electing a vice chair. Um, for those of you who are new, just so you're aware, sadly, our um, commissioner that we elected vice chair um, just last month was not reappointed. So we are in the um, challenging position of uh, appointing a new vice chair. And I will open the floor to nominations. Um, go ahead. Well, uh, I would nominate Colette. I think Colette would be a great vice chairman if she's uh, willing to accept the position. And I, I know she's already head of Cal. I know that, but uh, but I, I think she would do a great job. Yeah, and I would second that. Um, I'd I'd like to see Colette in that role as well. Um, I think she'd be great. I also think I didn't realize we had two lawyers on the commission now. <laughs> The two lawyers and architect, we can, you know, do a lot of damage here. Um, so yeah, I would agree with that. I also think it's important um, while we're talking about the election of the vice chair, which came up in our last meeting when we were meeting with the city manager, and we have to have an alternative uh, 
someone who can speak to the mayor because of the mayor has stated that she feels it's a conflict of interest right. generally if she speaks with you. Um, and that that can be a, you know, we want to be able to work around that. So we want to have somebody who can be our the designate. It seems natural. It would be the vice chair. And that I think Colette would be great at that um, as well. So is she Colette, are you willing? Silence. No, uh, yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Sonia and uh, Robin, for your confidence, and I am willing to serve. Thank you. All right, All right. we will vote. Um, we have a, a nomination and second for um, Colette Smith as vice chair. Um, all in favor, I guess, say aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. And uh, it sounds like we have a majority. Uh, any, well, any, any opposed? Anyone opposed? Hearing none, I will um, say that the nominations are closed and Colette is our new vice chair. So Yay. congratulations, Colette, and welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> um, Thank you. Okay, I have to talk to you about something. No, just that was a joke. That was a joke. That was wrong. <laughs> so um, the next, uh, oh, I, I'm my apologies. I neglected to introduce our staff liaison earlier when we were doing work call, uh, Tiffany Alleman. Mm -hmm. um, my apologies for no. for no overlooking worries. you. So, no. it, no. um, at any rate, you have an opportunity to wipe the egg off my face <laughs> and uh, lead us through our um, Office of Public Open Public Meetings training, yep. which is a requirement for anyone who's involved in any way uh, in um, city or state or county business. Correct. Yep, so we're just going to watch a video off of the uh, Bob Ferguson's uh, Attorney General website. So hopefully everybody can see and hear this. I'm going to make for sure those everyone's who, muted. For those who are on the phone, can you send it to them? Oh, sure. A link so they can they can uh, sure, see it yeah. because I'm not sure how much they'll grasp over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Being vis the visual people we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy. You're going to have it coming through. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that works. Nope. Hold on one second. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Nope, it's the the level of talking. Would you like to read us in song? <laughs> Required uh, continuing legal education. They always have certain hours that you have to do, and certain everything is like oh, so yeah. so it takes them after presentation. Yeah, yeah. 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 continuing education every two years. So. Yeah. The online classes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, um, I'm not sure what the setting is. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. <laughs> and a city clerk, Josh Decker, have just joined us. Let's see. Okay, so it's on. Go to so, your slash Decker Wilson. I just <laughs> changed it, but it's been on here. Go to the Zoom. Yeah, so you're mm -hmm. screen sharing. Mm -hmm. And then watch when I play it. <laughs> Oh, so the sound's not coming through. Yeah. Either. Isn't that weird? Um, go your settings here and change that to owl. Oh, cool. that would make the sound for you. Is your video? There you go. Yay. Okay. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! You're so good at that stuff. Okay, let's it up. I'm gonna 
crank up the sound. Yeah. Oh. I'm not getting any volume. Oh, hmm. Are they muted? Mm -hmm. No, uh, I mean, they're I'm muted. But they, sh they should still be able to hear. Can you hear us talking? I can hear you talking. I just can't hear the video. Shoot. Should I um, just open it up? Should I open the video up in my browser? Crank that up. See your sound. Um, yeah, it won't even let me because it's controlled by the owl. Yeah, I can do. I can just send the link to you guys, and then um, you can follow along. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself so that sure. I don't uh, hear. Okay. Okay, so I just sent it. So if you guys want to just open it up, follow it along, or it, um, I guess watch it later if we're having trouble. That's no good. Do we just, do we need to do it in this meeting or can people just do it? And say they, you know, and send you a note that they've done well, it. That's how I've always done it. That's how we've always done it. I don't know why. Uh, let me just. I just want to make sure Josh doesn't have a problem with that. Okay. Yeah, but that's because most of the people who need to see it are here. So. Hold on one second. I promise yeah. I'll see it on my own. <laughs> I love training videos. I really do. <laughs> You're not going to love this one, but that's okay. <laughs> no, don't worry. I, I have seen so many of them. I don't really like them. So, um, but I promise I'll watch it. <laughs> well, let's just um, keep our fingers well, crossed. Then. Well, Leah and Cassie and Colette, we will quiz you. Yes. In the next okay. meeting. Right. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay, we're gonna I like it. Game on. Everyone can watch it on their own time. Great. It's only 15 minutes. And then just shoot me an email letting me know that you watched it. That's right? great. Okay. okay. So we're just going to move on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That works way better. Yeah. Um, all right. So then our next um, order of business is a review of our work plan and also a review of our um, arts and culture um, comprehensive plan. Anna. But before we do that, I didn't mm -hmm. backtrack. We didn't approve the minutes. No. Because we forgot to approve the minutes. So we have two minutes to two sets of minutes to approve here. And um, there are actually only four of us that know anything about these, <laughs> but that's a quorum. So um, may I um, assume that everyone has read the minutes to our March 8th regular meeting. That was the meeting at which we selected our um, recommendations for the creative endeavor grants. And that also includes the recommendations that we uh, forwarded to city council. Um, Do we need to make uh, an, a comment or amendment in the or in this meeting that says that we also, you know, we saw the amendment to the meeting or to the, to no. this or, okay. That's not part of the All meeting. right, okay. We're all, we also have to approve the minutes of the special meeting on the 23rd. Right. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Yeah. Got it, all right. I'll make a motion to approve the, meet, the minutes of the meeting on uh, March 8th. And a second. That was uh, Sonia and seconded by, um, Robin. <laughs> Robin. And then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting on March 23rd. And I'll second that as well. Likewise, uh, moved and seconded. So um, are there no corrections or additions? So all in favor of approving the minutes of the 
March 8th meeting and the March 23rd special meeting. Say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. aye. Thank you. Um, motion has passed and the minutes are approved. Um, so moving on now to a review of our work plan and also our greater I mean, our arts and culture element. The work plan is something that's the, that every commission or board does, uh, in fact, every department does every year um, to just give, uh, um, give the council and city administration an idea of the things that we are hoping to accomplish uh, in the year ahead. We start working on it in usually September or October, and then it's approved as part of the, um, then oftentimes we present it to the city council in a small work study session. And then um, it's approved and becomes part of the budget for the biennium. And this year we're working on 2023-24. And our work plan is uh, here in our packet. And um, this year we have tied in our uh, goals with specific parts of the um, arts and culture element, uh, which is that first column that you see on the left. Yeah, those are the five goals that we came up with yeah. um, years ago or in, over the course of the last few years. So, so our actions this year are continuing to work to um, meet the goals that we established in our uh, arts and culture um, comprehensive plan. And um, shall we go through them one by one? Would that be helpful to people? Or do you want to just, what's your preference? Just Well, I think, you know, I would suggest that maybe we just kind of do some highlights here because mm -hmm. I wanted to um, tie in with my, uh, state arts commissioner at the creative district. Right. And I think that that kind of aligns with the yeah. very first action item there. Um, so um, one, this was part of uh, um, the, the original cultural element, but now it's broader. Um, I'm wearing my state arts commissioner hat, talking about the effort to see if we're eligible for a Washington State Creative District, and been working with the city to um, move forward on, on convening a meeting that includes all the people that are, all the groups that are listed above. Plus, I'd also like to advocate to any of the arts commissioners um, to suggest who else um, might be involved in that meeting, um, who is involved in either commerce in the city or, um, or um, the arts in the city. And I have a very robust list um, that I've created, also working with Katrina. Um, and then we will, um, when ready, let you know that there's an upcoming large meeting that will be held for everybody to hear about it. We've talked about it in the Arts Commission ourselves. Um, we had Annette Roth come um, and talk to us. Um, and I think, you know, our next step is to get, as we had said, get the whole community together and see, get everybody at the table who wants to be at the table and see how that all um, filters out. Um, but, um, with very positive meetings, looking forward to, to moving forward to the next step with this and we'll see how it goes. I can send everybody a link to the, what the creative district is and who are creative districts already in the state. There are 15 of them, I think. There are a few more that are about to come on board and they include everything, including Bainbridge Island, uh, Edmonds, um, you know, Spokane. So there's a whole variety of different types of cities that are part of the creative districts. Mm -hmm. So I will send out a link as my um, state arts commissioner hat, and it will come from a different email than you're used to seeing me from. So um, so I think that kind of covers the first one. Right. And um, you might want to mention that we need to get city buy-in. We have city buy-in. They're interested. They're helping right. support us. Right. And um, 
and and it was important. Uh, I mean, they're they're helping us to they're supporting us in in, in broadening the um, ex exploration of whether this will work for Harbor. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's by no means a done deal because you have a lot of steps that the state asks you to go through. But they are they are interested in pursuing and seeing what this might be. Investigating. Yeah. Further. Yes. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany was at the meeting. That's why I'm looking at her. I'm like, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, so it could be pretty exciting. Um, and I'll send you a link to all of that. Um, what also this opens, the main thing it does, it helps also open us up for additional grants for arts and culture in the city. And um, and that is all encompassing. It's, it's basically how to help drive economic development mm -hmm. and growth around arts and culture. Um, but also at the same time, the way the state looks at it is the, the creative economy, as they call it, drives so much in every city, including restaurant attendants, you know, people at, at, at um, activities, plays, uh, you know, uh, markets, all of those things um, help drive the creative economy. And this is what this is basically about, is the creative economy. So I hope that makes sense just to all of you, but I will send you out um, a link. And if you have any questions, just follow up um, with me um, on my arts commissioner of the state email. <laughs> Sounds great, Robin. Really exciting. <laughs> Thanks. And now I'm going to take that hat off. Okay. <laughs> Back to you, Charlie. All right. Okay. Um, so other other um, goals uh, in uh, in the creative uh, and economic vitality um, column are and and um, some of these are wishful thinking. Some of them were um, goals that we created um, that um, situations have changed within the city, and so they might be put on hold. For example, um, the Gig Harbor mural project was something that we were working on with the previous marketing yeah, it's no longer here. Yeah. director who's no longer here. So um, although that um, probably remains a goal for this year, it's probably not going to happen certainly this year. And actually, I will add that under the um, creative district, there is funding for murals for cities. So if you become approved, yeah. you, get, you we can get funding for murals. Right. Yeah. Can I ask oh. a question? Can I can I ask a question? Where was the Gig Harbor mural project going to take place? Do they have a do you guys have a location or was this just an idea? They they were going to be sort of all over. We okay. were all the um, commissioners were sort of um, char well asked to um, maybe suggest locations where temporary murals could be installed. The okay. one that we have, the one that is um, currently installed is right down on Harbor View uh, in the courtyard of um, Devoted Kiss. Oh, right, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and um, that one has um, gone through several iterations. Right. Now it's just kind of a generic one. Um, but we were looking at other places where there could be, possibly be a mural, a, sort of a portable mural mm -hmm. um, that could be painted on big um, talking about panels. Yeah. Panels, yeah. yeah, big panels and then installed mm -hmm. in temporary locations. Okay. And it could just have themes that could be wonderful little opportunities for photos. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we'll see. Okay. We, we, we love you or something. Like that. <laughs> um, so that that's that'll be fun, but it isn't gonna happen right now. It's okay. pretty wide open, Leah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, continuing, Idea, though. continuing with our creative endeavor grants, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then also continue as part of our creation of the uh, arts and culture element, we conducted a survey of um, several, well, a couple thousand people um, just to find out what uh, what interest there was in the arts arts and creative experiences in Gig Harbor. And we had remarkable results. 
we put it online and the city's tourism department uh, kind of managed the online survey for us. And we had close to 900 responses, which broke all records of city mm -hmm. surveys. Um, and the things that we found were very definitely strongly supportive of the arts. People who do art of any kind, in, including cooking or gardening. Um, people who are in orchestras or um, just play music or enjoy music, people who make films. So there, and, and people who um, support arts financially. Uh, it was, the, the, the results were really thrilling and helped us shepherd our arts and culture element through the whole bureaucratic process. Um, one of our goals at that time and continues to be to um, follow up on a new survey. And I will insert here that the city and, and um, Tiffany, I don't know if this is even possible, but I'll throw it out because the city has commissioned or contracted with a company that's going to con conduct six or eight surveys yeah. during the year. Mm -hmm. And I would like to propose that perhaps one of those could be um, a, a redoing of our arts and culture survey. Okay, I'll discuss that with staff and yeah. see if that's possible. Yeah. yeah, or even maybe a section of it. Um, yeah, we're, you know, yeah. I don't. What do, have they been designated yet, or is I don't know. Okay. They have. Yeah. Sure. So even if there was like something about yeah. like you know, um, entertainment, arts, culture, or something yeah. broad yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. the, but since you know, restaurants, yeah. dining, something like that. Since it's something that the city has already signed a contract for for this year, mm -hmm. um, I'm just throwing our hand yeah. in the ring. Yeah, idea. it would make sense. Yeah, yeah that's element to I like it. that. Yeah, right. So um, I'm sure they could find a little, mm -hmm. like at least ten questions for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, any questions on that creative and economic vitality section from anyone? Public arts and community design. Um, we are uh, trying to, we're keeping track of what's going on with the Crescent Creek um, master plan. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an open house for mm -hmm. the master plan on the 19th. Yeah. Here downstairs in the community rooms. Um, a citizens advisory group or stakeholders group has already been formed. And um, I don't believe anyone from the arts sector is in that group. The stakeholders are Sam Plot Volleyball and um, neighbors and um, people like that. So, but we're paying very close attention to it, partly because the Masonic Lodge, which is part of that creative um, Crescent Creek Park area, um, could possibly be um, become a community arts center. It's it's one of the few buildings in the city that could be um, used for arts and cultural experiences, which is a tremendous need in this community. There is no performance space except for the high schools. So, and the churches, and the churches, right? yeah. and those are harder and harder to book. So. Um, Continue to add carvings to the Harbor Arbor Art Project. Um, this one is gonna be on hold too, I think, because um, our uh, former commissioner uh, pretty much shepherded that through um, on her own. So, uh, but we'll just keep it there because it's become a very um, popular project. For those that don't know, uh, adjacent to the city hall is the um, Grandview Forest. And in the forest are about a dozen now um, carved trees and stumps, mm -hmm. um, snags and stumps that we commissioned uh, carvers to create and to turn into arts projects. And they're absolutely charming and wonderful. And they will eventually biodegrade because they're from stumps and snags. But uh, it just adds an element of surprise and magic to people that wander through the, the forest. Right. So we're and we're also looking for snags in other parks that could be candidates for 
uh, carving, carving or embellishing. They don't necessarily need to be carved. They can just be embellished in some way that turns them into an art piece. Oh, love that. Um, and we are continuing to advocate for 1% of the building costs for new construction in Gig Harbor to be dedicated to public art for the project. Emily, this is what I was talking, okay. saying about, which is right in your, mm -hmm. uh, I think, mm -hmm. um, wheelhouse, as they say. And and there, I don't know if you're familiar with other projects that have been done, like in the city of Seattle. It's just not like a statue. Mm -hmm. It can be like in Bellevue City Hall, when we did 1% for the arts in Bellevue, there's a beautiful mosaic um, floor in there oh, that was done oh. by the same mosaic artist who did the one in um, Safeco Field. Okay. And then there's also things like, you know, for the affordances, like door handles and mm -hmm. and rails. Um, the federal courthouse in Seattle is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good idea. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of times when people think of this, they think of it as, oh, let's put a a statue or a, a, a some sort of sculpture with a building, but there's other ways to do it. Yeah, um, integrated ways, yeah. Yeah. Like, so you know, um, I think you could. <laughs> I think you could drive that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and we've been working on the one percent for art for many years. Okay. But we are not going to give up. So <laughs> what what we've accomplished, which has been relatively successful. Um, Public Works Director Jeff Langhelm, who oversees all the city projects, pretty much, um, has on a couple of occasions allocated a portion of the construction budget, a very small, not one percent by any means, but you know, a few thousand dollars, maybe ten or fifteen thousand um, dollars, as something that could then be used for art, and that was actually how the Ansich Park artwork was installed. And we're currently working on, and Tiffany, I don't, maybe you could give us a status report. We're currently working on with um, um, some bronze artists from Seattle on um, installing some artwork in the sidewalk, the new sidewalk by the new Harborview Pioneer Roundabout. And there's a space, oh, yeah, what is an that? Eight, by, eight by 10 space designated in that sidewalk. Mm -hmm. As you walk by or drive by, you can see, wait, that place, that place doesn't match in that sidewalk. Someday that's yeah. going to have art installed in it. Um, Maybe we should put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah, I know it's moving uh, forward. I just don't know what happens. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last I heard it was kind of, I think I may have copied you in that com the communication that I had with the artist. Yeah. So, it, it went up to you know, uh, Aaron, our, the city engineer and, yeah. and stuff, and, and it is moving forward. Yeah. Okay. I just don't know at what stage it's at right yeah. now. Okay. They still might be yeah. trying if, to find. If we could on our, at our next meeting, maybe yeah. have a little project update on that. But that's one that was also, um, money for that was allocated from the construction budget. However, because the project was finished and paid for before the art was done, we're having to pay for it all ourselves out of our arts commission budget. Mm -hmm. So the timing of those kinds of projects can, as you can I'm sure understand, gets problematic because once the city signs off on the contract, mm -hmm. that includes they have to be signing off on the portion that would have been designated for art. So, um, the, and, and it's a, a dance to coordinate the art project with the overall construction yeah. project. Mm -hmm. so. So 1% for art, we will continue to pursue. <clears throat> and we're also continuing to work on an inventory and maintenance assessment for existing public art. We have a, a, a now 13-year-old um, catalog of publicly of the art that the city owns. And we're in the process, have been for several years of updating that. And there's some back and forth between our arts commission and the lodging tax advisory commission to see who is managing that right now last i heard ltac was going to be managing it but it seems to me like it's much more appropriate that the arts commission handle it because after all it's art any questions on public art and public arts and community design 
Okay, education and engagement. Um, identify potential partnerships for venues and creative offerings for the community. Uh, tour the 19 works of art in Washington State. I just want to um, yeah. comment on that a little bit because yeah. I think that I've seen a whole bunch of, you know, different um, type of things popping up all over, which is great. And I think, you know, look for us that as an arts, as the Arts Commission, look to be supportive of that. Um, everything from, um, you know, uh, it, our new Arts Commissioner is hosting something on um, April or her group, Local Makers, right, Casey? Um, but also I've noticed a lot of stores also hosting watercolor workshops. It's not just AR workshop. The tea, the new tea and sympathy, I think it's called store is hosting that um, Harbor Nest on the waterfront's been hosting some um, art um, watercolor things and is looking to do other more projects. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot that's beginning to crop up across the city. There of course is PAL, which is also, um, you know, it's open show, but the arts festival, which is coming up this summer, um, the studio tour. So I think there's a lot of good activity that's happening. Um, and the, and the uh, also the ghost tour, which Leah is a part of. And um, also, I think, Leah, you're involved in the uh, reigniting the art, the um, art, art walk. Mm -hmm. So I think all these things, um, the way that we need to be aware of and um, supportive of and try to show up at, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, you um, know, as an arts commissioner, so. It, it um, well, plus all the things that our Creative Endeavor Grant supports, the Gig Harbor Band Boosters concerts, for example, mm -hmm. Harbor Winds and um, the Peninsula Civic Orchestra concerts, um, yes. hands-on hands art <clears throat> projects. There are so many, the projects that we support with our, um, creative endeavor grants are also things that we should be aware of and try to make an appearance at if we can. Yeah, and I just wonder, I mean, I know, I mean, calendar monitoring is a nightmare. I mean, it's an ongoing nightmare for nobody's solved it yet. You know, how to, to you know, there's some childhood master calendar. It, it's almost impossible to get your hands around. But I wonder if there's a way we could share with each other should we like if we hear of something should we send to you tiffany and then oh, you can absolutely. and then you can send it out to all of um, us because we can't really talk to each right. other on email. we want to avoid yeah violating anything but absolutely so just let's just make yeah. a note to everybody right. like yeah. if you have an uh, um you know sonia you have events your husband has events uh -huh. let's just you know emily you mm -hmm. hear of anything any of you guys on who are on uh on this lovely shaped uh, speaker that yeah. we have here, <laughs> you know, and what you what you hear. I mean, I just think it's that if we kind of share that out, that that then we also become aware of all these things. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It would be wonderful if we could even take that a step further and make sure that those get included in the gigabyte, for example, of yeah. the and upcoming the, community. Yeah, we and, we put as much as we can in there, so and yeah, send it our website. way. Yeah. Because not only should we know about them, but we as arts commissioners should be trying to spread the word yeah, to the community right. yeah. about them. So yeah, absolutely. Great. I'd Excellent. really like to see on some of our local festivals uh, integrate more of the arts in them. It's like you go to festivals in other cities and let's say it's, it's an art festival. Yeah. They've got great artists that you see, but then they've got you know two music stages and then they've got fun food you know, vendors there. And it's, it, it makes you want to go and spend your afternoon there, not just kind of do your walk through and that's it. And even, you know, something like the garden walk could have artists participating in the garden walk. Well, actually, we do. To, you know, or you have a music area and then you take off and it's, it's just, it's nice to get everyone involved and make it more user-friendly and a little bit more attractive for everyone to go to. Right. That's true. And the garden walk actually does do that. I don't know who the artists are who are participating this year and then the two festivals that are coming up um but also do have musicians and food trucks and um i know that both colette can speak to the pal big pal festival coming up which has been going on for 37 years and then the new festival that 
Cassie is coming up. I think they're all looking at that, right? Um, okay. and, yeah. which is exciting. So, right. yeah. Colette, did you want to add anything, or Cassie? Um, well, I can say, you know, last year at the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, at our art festival, the, you know, it was post COVID and there was no music and there was something lacking, I thought. Uh, so this year we have music uh, for both days. All spots are filled. We're very excited and a lot more food trucks. <clears throat> and we're going to be filming a lot of it. So I, there's just a whole new excitement going on. Great. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, yeah. So we are excited about it. Great. Uh, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes. we can, yes. Okay, great. Sorry, we just hopped in the car to the airport. Um, yeah, so like Robin mentioned, we do have at the May 13th, uh, spring market and festival. We're going to have, I believe it's four live musicians, and then we have aerial artists performing during two different segments to kind of break it up and keep things entertaining, um, as well as the makers. And then we'll have on site workshops that people can sign up for so they can actually do some DIY on site. Um, and then a lot of the workshops you mentioned around town for the Harbor Nest and so forth, those are a lot of our local makers just kind of collaborating with the downtown businesses. And so we're doing a lot of that legwork and um, a lot of that banding together that we're talking about. And it's definitely, it's, it's fun. It's, it's energizing. So we're looking forward to more. Well, that's great. So if we can all like, you know, um, well, I would encourage you all to sign up for the PAL newsletter because it's free now. Um, I mean, it never, it, it only used to go to members, but now it goes, everybody is eligible. And um, to see some other things that are going on and about, but also um, encourage everybody to send things to Tiffany that she can send to us mm -hmm. and suggestions. Like Sonia, I bet that a lot of people would be interested in having, adding music and different uh to their different activities, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I know that for the big thing was for the pal, last PAL um, open jury, was it the open jury show or the open show? Was it your husband's right. group right. performed? Mm -hmm. And it was like, it made it change the whole atmosphere. Yeah, right? I thought, that was nice, yeah. 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 So I'm sure that other people would be open to those suggestions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the um, gig pass, the maritime gig, which is the city sponsored huge festival, First weekend in June that goes on for three days, I think, um, certainly two days. Um, they have music stages and food trucks and arts vendors and a parade and yeah. Do they have arts vendors? Or they have in the past. I'm not sure what they're doing this year. That's actually sponsored yeah. by they actually will. They have their vendor spots actually filled for okay. a two day event uh, on Saturday. And then on Sunday, they're having a local makers event as well as maritime um, businesses parked down in Sandy Park because their goal is to bring back the theme of maritime and to change things up on Sunday, uh, make it a little bit more exciting for people to come down for the blessing of the fleet. So they'll have live music and food trucks as well as the car show and the makers market all on Sunday. Okay, that's great. And yeah. yeah. And the, um, Leah's raising her hand. I see you, Leah. <laughs> uh, I just want to put in a plug for Art Walk, which is going to start on May 6th. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the first Saturday of the month. Uh, I don't know um, if we're running it through the fall, if we're going to run it through the year. We haven't really decided exactly how long it's going to run, um, but we do have to give it a chance again. And uh, hopefully we'll follow suit with Bainbridge and have it every, once a month uh, ongoing forever, I, I hope. But we are, there's a small group of us kind of organizing this. So I would, I would put it out that if anyone has any great ideas or musicians that wanna play downtown, we'll try to figure it out. We're trying to get uh, store owners involved, uh, like maybe Heritage having a special drink on that day or the three galleries that are involved, Eb Ebb Tide, Gallery Row, and um, Water's Edge. Uh, hopefully there'll be a demo going on at all three of those galleries. Maybe there'll be some visiting artists 
but really any input anyone has, because it's a small group of us that are kind of um, making this happen again. And we're very excited, but uh, we need we need lots of advertisement and we uh, need any ideas. So just putting that out there. I think you and Sonia should hook up. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, yes, I'm all for that. Great. Um, any other? Um, oh, we're we're not done with that yet. Um, so we're talking. We've been talking about potential partnerships and the wonders of cross pollination. <laughs> the importance of it. Um, during the 19 works of art from the Washington State Arts Commission that are currently displayed in our local schools. And um, this is also Robin wearing her arts law hat, um, who would guide us on that too. Yeah, if I, I have to find them first, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good, because I'm not sure. No, they're all online actually. Yeah. There's an extensive list online um, for on the arts law website. So you can search by Gig Harbor and they all pop up. Yeah. And uh, continuing with her arts walk app, um, becoming familiar with their arts walk education programming available for students in our um, school district. Yeah, there was there's a grant that just closed, but um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, it's called Creative Start, but they have a lot of education grants, which I mentioned in a lot of our. Um, interviews and when we were doing the uh the endeavor grants so just to be aware of um for those who are engaged with with you know children and mm -hmm. and um pre-k through 12th mm -hmm. right. and um continuing to potential <laughs> for this is when always gets big chuckles highlighting the gig harbor official stalling and community events and educate the public about that song. There is, in fact, a, an official Gig Harbor song called Moon Over Gig Harbor. Under, under a Gig Harbor. Under, under, under a Gig Harbor Moon. Moon. <laughs> under a Gig Harbor Moon. And somewhere we have the um, sheet music for the chart for that. Uh, and um, uh, we might be able to talk the Gig Harbor bands into playing that at one of their concerts. Um, <laughs> Perhaps another opportunity might be at these summer sounds at Scanzi Park um, summer concerts to provide the chart to some of those bands and see if they would, as their grand finale. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, this is the Big Harbor's official song. We're so glad to be here. Everybody's <laughs> um, So that that's always a fun thing to pursue. Um, places and spaces. Um, we've talked about the Crescent Creek master planning process and that we're following that very closely. Um, actually, one of our huge challenges, not just for the Arts Commission, but for arts groups throughout Gig Harbor is having adequate spaces to perform uh, or to meet, to hold workshops or so forth. There simply are not spaces available for an orchestra concert or a band concert or um, a workshop painting workshop, um, a dance performance, play. Uh, we are sorely lacking in any kind of public arts space or e even a community gathering space really mm -hmm. that could include arts and cultural events. So that um, that one has a huge star and exclamation, exclamation points beside it because that's really a critical need. Uh, if you have any ideas of places that we've got, the Masonic Hall possibly, maybe the place where Seven Seas used to be in the Judson Street um, uh, complex, um, maybe the Russell Building. And there, are, there are potential places, but um, getting them to be really seriously looked at as art spaces uh, is a continuing challenge for us. I also know that I spoke with um, someone named Michelle Bailey this week. She posted on Gig Harbor, not 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 Gig Harbor, 
friends, friendly friends, the one that's the nice one. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Not the snipey one. Um, <laughs> the friendly friends Facebook yeah. about that they have either they purchased or are now managing the studs, the corner across from the Tides oh, Tavern, really? no, which is the old studs, oil. which I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't. Yeah. It's the old studs oil. I guess that's where they, that's where they the family it. owned it for 50 years that's or something. Partner, but now they are are have, are taking it over. And I had a really nice chat with her and they they you know they have a long way to go, but they they want to make that a gathering space. Um, I mean, they're years away from building. Yeah. For sure, but that you know, she's also shared, and I think you know um, that they're looking at other ways to kind of use that space in the interim and as they work with the city. So you know, at some point when they get a little firm, it might be nice to invite her to a meeting or something. Absolutely, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a coup to be able to grab hold of that space. Yeah, and and I asked her. I mean, it's not like the space by um, where the old Goodwill used to be, where that new circle is yeah. in Harborview. That's like a toxic wasteland that needs to be like, you know, it, it is. I don't know what was there, but but apparently this is okay. This space is okay. So, yeah. so it's just a matter of what to do there and yeah. how to do it. That's yeah. great. And there's a free parking lot right across the street. <laughs> yeah. And they, all they have to do is arm wrestle the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also, who told me this? And I went and checked it out. Is there's a bunch of public parking down the street there that I didn't even know, I didn't know yeah. about, not that I've been here all that long, but there is public parking like across from where Seven Seas is building and all of that too. Right. Yeah. yeah, all along um, where Harborview ends mm -hmm. at the old ferry line. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was, I was like, yeah. oh, let's go see. <laughs> the wonderful viewpoint down at that, at that end. There's actually a little park there um, but there's also a lot of private property mm -hmm. adjacent right. to it. That, yeah, yeah. Well, walk it's, the dogs down there, and it's yeah. it's pretty. Yeah, yeah it's very nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With a great view of the lighthouse and the yeah. sand spit mm -hmm. and the herring mm -hmm. rookery across the road, mm -hmm. and I mean across the channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Um, any discussion more on spaces and places, uh, culture and heritage action items? Uh, explore the potential to collaborate with the Downtown Waterfront Alliance on light bulb banner art. The reason this is on there is because one of the original um, responsibilities of the Arts Commission was to provide banners for the light posts downtown on Harborview Drive. That has um, disappeared from the Arts Commission's um, responsibility sheet and then taken over at some point by the Waterfront Alliance. Mm -hmm. But perhaps we could coordinate with the Waterfront Alliance to um, help them select the banners. Mm -hmm. One idea that we had years and years ago for the Arts Commission was to maybe commission uh, uh, students to create a, a painting that could be then made into a banner mm -hmm. so that the, all the artwork along Harborview Drive would be created by local students, um, which would be you know varying degrees of sophistication, but um, <laughs> would make people smile and, mm -hmm. and make mom and dad so proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally engage with the Gig Harbor Marketing and Tourism, um, on the mural project, which was also up in uh, number one above, which is, as we said, on hold. Um, how are we doing for tonight? Well, it's only 11 or 20. 11 or 20. Um, so, guiding us um, in pretty much all we do is the arts and culture element, which we spent five years um, putting together and was finally approved by the city council uh, two, two years ago, three years ago. Um, not all that long ago. It was over the pandemic, so it's all a blur, but okay, it is, yes, got it yeah. true. Um, Robin was part of the citizens group, and um, we had about a dozen of us that represented um, the city, um, the history museum, local businesses, 
um, other arts groups. Uh, it was it was a pretty diverse group of um, not only business people and and city representatives, but also art representatives. Uh, we reviewed um, arts and culture elements from many other cities, from Seattle and Olympia and Tacoma to Spokane and Wenatchee and Walla Walla and Bainbridge Island and um, all the cities that we could locate, cities and towns that we could locate had cultural elements in their comprehensive plan. And um, conducted the survey that we mentioned earlier and came up with <clears throat> uh, these goals and um, objectives that, um, that we agreed are important to the people of Cake Harbor. And the premise was um, that up until that point, um, Gig Harbor, the city of Gig Harbor felt, seemed to feel that art was statues in public parks and realizing that it's so much more than that. It's film, it's theater, it's um, music, it's dance, it's um, all, all those creative expressions that, uh, that are included under the big umbrella of art, not just statues in parks. So with that in mind, we um, put in a lot of hours to create this arts and culture plan. Um, we can go through it now, um, but I, I, I would urge you to become familiar with it because um, it's a very important document. And as part of the comprehensive plan, it's an official statement by the city of Gig Harbor that arts and culture matter. And um, we need to keep reminding the city council and city administration of that fact that you know, arts and culture matter. And we need to look for as many opportunities as we can find to bring artistic expression and cultural experiences to our community. So um, shall we just go through, how should we do this? I mean, well, I, I don't think we should go through the yeah. item by item. Just you know, everyone can kind of read. If, if there are any highlights you want to you want to mention, I think well, we, that would be fine. We've gone through most of them in our work plan. We, we will well, the work plan only pulled a few. Yeah. For because there's so much in here uh -huh. in terms of under, but the work plan highlights the five buckets. And then if you go and read under the flat buckets, yeah, I think if you read it and then have any thoughts about it, that would be the yes, best. Right. Um, uh, and, and also I think what might be nice next meeting, um, if Colette and Charlie are and, and open to it, now, I think it used to, um, uh, that maybe you all who haven't seen this before, can bring back some thoughts about, you know, how we could think about future implementation or inroads we can make in terms of making some of this happen because um, there's there's a lot here and uh, and it it takes advocacy. So it does take advocacy. We're currently updating the call. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to mention that 2024 is when it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we have to update anything in here that we felt we'll have an opportunity. To. Yeah, I believe. Okay, yeah. great. I haven't gotten into all those details yet, but yeah, I, mean, I would assume that's good to know. Right, right. right. So, uh, and I'll say that originally, our original proposed arts and culture plan was in language that was much more passionate, <laughs> passionate than this. Um, and then they hired someone and they made it very legal. <laughs> No, actually, the person that they hired agreed with her and 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 presented it with wonderful passion for the arts, which we loved. But then, when the city got when the city uh, comp plan team got a hold of it, they realized that it has to be in language that fits with all the other elements of this comprehensive plan, and it can't be like creative and passionate. <laughs> So, um, so and it also looks really nice too. <laughs> and it also, it's flying in with all those other thousands of pages in the comprehensive plan. We talk about stormwater and sewer and right. utilities and transportation and traffic flow and all those sorts of things. So, um, 
But anyhow, it's a very, um, it's a good element. It was carefully crafted and um, is um, uh, supposed to clarify city policy regarding arts and culture, guide decision making and future investments by other city departments, the Gift Harbor Arts Commission, and local groups and organizations, and identify com complementary policies and community initiatives, including land use. Community design, transportation, economic development, parks and recreation, and capital facilities. So there are um, many opportunities to bring arts, artistic expression, and artistic um, um, activities into our daily lives. Well, and I, why this was so important was just not that nothing existed in other cities. It exists within mm -hmm. their structure, um, and it was important to have it here. So yeah. that's why it matters that it's right. kind of in the in the comprehensive plan. Yeah, it's it's an, an official city document that guides the city in their decision making. So yeah, and why we didn't have it before was a puzzle. <laughs> um, so any other um, business? We, we do have more time, but I think we pretty much filled it, fulfilled our agenda. Um, any commissioner reports or comments? Yeah. Meetings coming up. The um, um, Crescent Creek Open House Comprehensive Plan Open House will be on the 19th. Tiffany, maybe you want to send a little invitation? Sure. About that. Too. And are there other things coming up that the city recently had a um, very interesting workshop online about climate change and the city is also crafting a climate sustainability action plan um, that isn't necessarily arts related but um, if we don't save our climate we don't have any place for art so mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll look through the city's agendas and see if there are other things that perhaps commissioners should be aware of or might be interested in I have, so, I have a, can I ask a question? Sure. I think this goes to Robin really. As we, uh, all of us are experiencing different events in Evanston or we're in charge of making them happen, should we be docu documenting them in any way so that when we do go to, I mean, you know all about this creative district thing, should we be putting all this documentation somewhere so that when we apply for creative a creative district, we have all our tools. Does that make sense? Um, so it's all, yes, I understand what you're saying. And um, yes, we will. It's, it's the, the, all of the documentation is on the arts, arts uh, wall website, but okay. we will pull that in and we will begin where that will live. I'm not sure in terms of the arts law, um, or in terms of the creative district, I'll, Tiffany will have some thoughts on that, I'm sure. And I think it's all determined, we'll all be determined where it, how it all forms up together because um, in terms of just creative district, in terms of general, are you also talking about just general arts commission stuff, Leah? Um, I'm talking about like, for the local makers, um, Cassie should document what's going on there, and I should document what goes on for Arts Walk and maybe the tour, just so that we have all of the, the tools so when we apply, should we be taking videos? Should we be taking photographs? Should we be? That's what you're saying. That's what I'm like, do you need extra documentation? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, well, you know what? I always think all of that is great. Um, the more the better and um, but um, it's also that you don't have to prove that you're doing all this stuff it's more like you want to support moving forward but I just say a good way make to document since we all have such great representation now on the arts commission is that maybe um, you know and Charlie and Colette let me know what you think about this but um Maybe at each meeting we take a, a time aside to just report on the different projects that we're engaged in, and then it becomes part of the um, also becomes part of our meeting 
minutes. That's right. And on recording. And also, I would add that if if you have received a creative endeavor grant, part of your reporting process uh, should include yes. Document uh, documentation okay. oh, of right. the project. Mm -hmm. That's one of the requirements of, of your reporting. Okay. So it's going to be happening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You sh but also, you know, I mean, Leah, you know, you've done the Facebook page for ghosts, the ghost tour last time, right. all of that, you right. know, it just helps put it all out there. Right. I mean, I mean, I don't know, you know, social media is such, I always call it such a hungry beast because right. you just, you can't feed it enough, but, um, but, you know, just the city has a Facebook page, right? Mm -hmm. That we could give you stuff to put up on, right? Okay. Absolutely. Do you do, you do the posting for the city yep. page? I do the Facebook. I do the Gigabyte. Oh, yeah. oh you do the Gigabyte? Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't know you did the Gigabyte. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I we took that over when Maura left. Oh, okay. And so Josh. Sure All right. So Tiffany is the person that you want to send that yeah. stuff to. <laughs> we have her right, right here. Yeah. <laughs> cornered. Um, Tiffany is the assistant city clerk. But more important than that, she's our liaison, yeah. and we okay. can claim we're all one. <laughs> yeah, so like, oh, so like, I would say definitely for like um, the first art walk that's coming up, Leah. Right. right. Feed Tiffany stuff mm -hmm. and take pictures and. Right. Great. Great. When is the first art walk? May sixth. Uh, May, May it's um, we are scrambling, but we we ha almost have a logo, and so we're moving forward. It's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. So uh, you'll be hearing from me. That's great. 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 Excellent. Um, anything else for the good of the order? Um, hearing or seeing none. Leah, do you have your hand up again? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, I I don't want to omit anyone that needs that wants to say something. So I'm very jealous of where you're sitting, Leah. I know. I did this on purpose, right? Like, it is cruel. yeah, you're cruel. But yeah. I, am, I am in the shade. The sun is very hot. Uh, bring some back for us, okay? I will. I will. <laughs> so, um, with no other business at hand, uh, our next meeting is May 10th second Wednesday of the month. And um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Would you like to do the honors? Emily? Yeah. Motion second. <laughs> you you right? have to just, Did no. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And you oh, can okay. second it. Oh. Perfect. OK, it's been moved and seconded that we moved by um, Sonia, seconded by Emily to adjourn. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. No opposition. Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Enjoy, uh, everybody. Enjoy your travel. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Good work, everyone. <laughs>